Hi, my name is Seti and welcome back to the channel where we make educational technology easy for you. In today's video, we're looking at assignments and all the different types of assignments you can assign to your students in Google Classroom. So let's dive into it with another flipped classroom tutorial. Now assignments are incredibly useful and in Google Classroom you have a range of different types of assignments. So let's start by opening up Google Classroom. Now here you can see I've got Google Classroom open and we're going to just jump into one of my demo classes. So let's go ahead and open up this demo class. Now once you're in your classroom the first thing you'll want to do is navigate to the second tab where it says classwork because every single assignment has to be set in that classwork tab. So let's go ahead and open up classwork. And then you'll see there is a big create button in the top left corner. Now, before we start creating assignments, it's important to note that every classroom also has a calendar and a drive folder attached to it. So here you can see the Google calendar and the class drive folder. So when you are setting assignments and you give them a due date, they will automatically appear onto that calendar. The same goes for resources shared in the assignments. They will automatically be housed within that folder. Now let's go ahead and assign our first assignment. We're going to click on create and here we now have five options now the first is the standard assignment the second a quiz the third is where you ask your students a question and this is great for taking attendance during a live lesson then we have material where you can share let's say a PDF file or something you'd like your students to look at and then the final one is to reuse a post now reusing a post will allow you to reuse assignments and then tweak them slightly the last option topic, this is how you can organize and structure your assignments. So to make it easier for your students, I highly recommend that you use those topics, structure everything neatly, so it's easy for them to then find the assignments set to them. Let's go ahead and select the first option, assignment. I'm going to click on assignment and we now get all the information we can fill out. Now there's a number of things that we can fill out. One is the title, so I'm going to just type in a demo assignment. And then we're going to add some instructions. Now the instructions are optional, so you don't have to fill this out. We can also now attach some resources to this. Now these resources can come from either our computer or our Google Drive. So let's go ahead and click on add. And this now allows us to select any resource from our Google Drive, add a link. This is a link to an external resource. We can upload a file or attach a YouTube video. Now I'm going to attach a link from my Google Drive. So let's go ahead and click on Google Drive. And let's select this first file here working with Docs and Drive. Now, as soon as you've attached a file, what's important to note is that there are different options of sharing this file with your students. And the three main ones are right here. You can either give your students the permission to view this file. And that means every student sees the same file. The second option is that every student can edit this file. So we're all working on the same documents. And then the final one is where we make a copy for each student. So each student will be getting their own copy. Now it's important for you to decide which one you want to use because each of these will have a different way of then assessing that work. On the top right corner, we can now assign this to various classrooms or multiple classrooms by ticking this box. We can also select the students within each classroom. So if you want to differentiate the work and only assign this to one or two students in particular, you can do that right here. Now I'm going to select just the one class and only one student. There we go. So as you can see here, I've selected a single class and a single student. I can assign points. I'm going to leave this at 100, but you can also have it as unmarked. That's great for those ongoing projects where you don't necessarily mark the work. We can set a due date, which I'm going to do right now. I'm going to set a due date in a couple days time. We can add a due time, but we don't need that. And then that topic. Now within topic, you can assign a previously used topic or you can create a new one right here. I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to create a topic and I'm going to call it demo topic just to keep it nice and easy. The next step is that rubric. Now adding a rubric and attaching it to your assignments will make it not only easier for you to then grade these assignments and give feedback, but it also shows your students what's expected and what sort of standards you will be using to assess their work. So let's go ahead and add a rubric. Now I'm going to create a new rubric because I haven't used one yet, but I could also reuse a rubric or import from Sheets. Let's go ahead and create a new rubric. Now here we can now add all our different criteria. 
at the top we can either use scoring or not and then we can add a title and that description so let's go ahead and add our first one this is the title about the quality of the work we can add a description how well did you complete your work now i'm going to turn off scoring there we go and then we're going to give this first level a title so we're just going to say developing and then what does that mean we can add another criteria level here. So let's go ahead and add a second level. This means secure. Now you can add multiple levels within this criteria. And in order for you to stay consistent, it's important to also talk to your colleagues and see what sort of terminology is used at your school. Now, if you use that same terminology and then give them that description, your students will know exactly what's expected of them. If you choose to add a second or third or fourth criteria, you can simply add a criterion here down below by clicking on that plus icon. On. Once everything is set, go to the top right corner and click on save. Now, as soon as you've saved this rubric, it's attached to the assignment. Now, if you push this out now to multiple classes, every single class will see the same rubric. In addition to that, we also have the originality reports. Now here you get a little notice that says we can only use originality reports for three assignments per class and that's because this is part of the free edu domain now if you had g suite enterprise for education well then you had unlimited originality reports an originality report is going to compare all the work from your students and then it's going to give you a breakdown of where it finds the same sentences or paragraphs so this is great when you have long essays or you really want to see that original work and not just copy paste it from websites or other places, turning this on will allow you to really see where the work has come from. Now I'm not going to use this at this time so I'm going to click on cancel and now I'm going to assign this assignment. Now there are again three options. I could either save this as a draft, so here we can save this draft, return to it later and then finish setting it up. I can schedule it or I can assign it straight away. Now I'm not going to schedule it, I'm going to assign it straight away, but scheduling your assignments can be a huge time saver. So you can start the week by simply setting all your assignments, scheduling them to go out at different times throughout the week and then you don't have to worry about setting them at specific times. So let's go ahead and click on assign. And there we go, this is now being assigned to that single student. And when I click on the topic on the left hand side, I will see that assignment. As a teacher, I get an instant overview of how many have been assigned, how many have been completed by looking here on the right hand side. One has been assigned, none have been handed in. You can also add some additional comments to the students and I see my rubric. So now let's go ahead and have a look at the student's view of this assignment. So here I am now inside my student's view and at the bottom you can see that I now have a new assignment. I can also find this when I go to classwork and then here in the classwork I will have that topic on the left hand side and here my assignment. You can see it's been assigned, but I have not submitted any work. So let's go on and open up this assignment and let's just see what sort of information is available to us. First of all, we have our rubric. When I open my rubric, I can see what my teacher expects of me. And I can also click on this assignment to get more information. Here I can start a conversation with private comments that go back and forth between myself and the teacher. So let's just demonstrate that now. Let's just say thank you for the task and let's send it to our teacher. We also have class comments and these comments can be seen by everyone. So let's now jump back to the teacher's view. Now here, when the teacher jumps into this assignment, you'll get an overview of all your students here on the left-hand side. You can see that this student has left a private comment and I can reply to that. You're welcome. There we go, we're going to send that to our student. I can see that the rubric is correctly attached they have the file and they have not yet submitted anything. So now let's go back to our student and you can see the student instantly gets that message within their assignment. This is all live and so a great way of collaborating or just checking in with students on how they're doing. Now if you remember I gave everyone their own copies so let's go ahead and open up this file by clicking in the top right corner. We are now inside this document. I'm just going to highlight this to make some small changes. There we go. And then I'm going to close this document. Let's say that I've finished and I'm ready for my teacher to grade it. Well, I'm going to click on hand in. Let's say I want to add additional information or more pictures or more documents. I would click on add or create. Let's go ahead and click on hand in. 
I'm going to submit this to my teacher. And as soon as I've done that, I lose my editing rights. So now I can't go into this document anymore and change things. As you can see here, I can no longer make changes to the file. Now let's go and have a look at what our teacher sees. Our teacher now sees that one student has handed in their work. They can click on that. And then here they see another note saying hand it in. They can now manually open this by clicking on the document and then start grading it and leaving feedback. On the right hand side, they will see their rubric so they can open this up and simply click everything that they want to assign and then they can return the work to the student. Once they return the work to the student, the student gets editing rights back and they can make improvements. This is great for a feedback loop and it really allows the student to develop their work over time and not just have a single task that is then submitted and grade it instantly. I'm going to cancel this and I am going to grade it. So let's say 80 points out of 100. And there we go. We're going to leave that as it is and we're going to click on return. I'm going to return these grades. And as soon as I've left these marks and I return the work to the student, the student will see those marks. They will see where the feedback was left and how they can improve their work. So now let's go and see what these student sees going to open up our student view again and they have been returned their work. In the top right corner it says marked, they have their grades, so let's say 80 out of 100 and they see the rubric that is ticked accordingly. They can now resubmit this work or they can just leave it as it is and then these marks will go into their gradebook. So let's go ahead and have a look at that gradebook so you can see what this looks like to the teachers. Now here back on the main page of our teachers classroom there is a marks tab. Now in that marks tab I can see all the different assignments side to side and then because I've just given 80 points to myself you can see here that it says 80 out of 100. This is a great overview of all the assignments that have been marked and this way you have a clear gradebook and you can really see which area as your students are struggling in. Now there are a couple of different types of assignments within Google Classroom and the next one is the quiz assignment. Now a quiz is a little bit different in that sense that it's automatically attaching a forms and then that form can be used as a quiz. So let's go ahead and have a look at this. We're going to type in demo quiz and then leave the instructions blank. We're going to select a single student again and there we go and we're going to leave this as an unmarked quiz. We have our blank quiz here. We can now click on this quiz. And as soon as we open up this form, we can start setting it up with all our questions. This is no different from going into a forms first and then changing it into a quiz. This will just save you a little bit of time. So let's say the first question is, is it day or night? There we go. And then we can add an answer key. So when you click on the answer key, you are actually going to assign the correct answers. So let's say that I want option one to be the correct answer and then click on done. Now, because this has been set as a quiz assignment, it is automatically going to grade all the multiple choice answers. And this can be a huge time saver if you're just quickly trying to check the understanding of a lesson. So this is the second type of assignment, the quiz assignment. I'm going to add it to the same topic. Now, when you tick grade importing, it's automatically going to limit your students from submitting multiple times and it's going to import all the information into your gradebook. Now, let's go ahead and click on save and assign this to our students. And then let me show you the next type of assignment. So here within our classwork, we have another type. We have the question and the material. Now, the question is the easiest one. So we can ask a question, what is your favorite color? And then we can simply leave it as a short answer. Now, this could be a multiple choice question. In addition to that, you can either allow or disallow students from replying to each other and you can allow them to edit their answer. I use this a lot for a quick check in at the end of a lesson or maybe even at the start of a lesson just to make sure that everyone is present. You could even use this to take attendance when you're teaching online. Now here at the top, you can then ask this question straight away or as before, schedule it and then ask it later. So let's go ahead and click on ask. And then the final one is the material type. Now the material allows you to to do a similar thing to the question, not too much information. You just simply share a resource with your students. This can be done by clicking on the add at the bottom, or if you're creating a brand new resource, then you can click on the create button and this will allow you to create any of these file types. So let's go ahead and create a new document. 
And there we go. And as soon as I create this document, I can open it in a second tab. I can start typing up all the information I want them to have access to. And then before sharing it with them, at the top, I can add my topic. Now, this is not like an assignment where you can give everyone their own copy. This is sharing a material so everyone will get the viewing permissions and everyone will see the exact same file. And then when it comes to reusing posts, well, you can always reuse a post, choose from any of your classrooms, select the post you'd like to reuse, and then before assigning it to new students, you can change all the information and really save a lot of time. For even more tips and tricks on Google Classroom and setting assignments, click on the playlist right here. In the meantime, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.